I'm here with Tuval Chesler. He is the formal senior advisor to the CEO of the National Cyber Security Authority in Israel. He's currently living in London. So tell us a little bit about some of your work there, obviously the things you can tell us about. Sure. Uh, so uh, hi. Uh, basically, uh, in the last few years, I've been active in the cybersecurity sector in uh, Israel, uh, first in government and then in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Uh, in government, uh, I worked in national security and then started working for the National Cybersecurity Authority, uh, which is basically the national authority that is responsible for safeguarding the entire, the entire civilian sector in terms of cybersecurity. Uh, just some background, about 20 years ago, Israel was one of the pioneer countries that decided to defend its critical assets, 20-something uh, companies that each uh, got a defense suit, tailor-made defense suit from the security services, how to defend their, uh, basically, data. It was then not sub security, of course, it was data security and data assurance and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, but 10 years later, the government uh, realized that in order to defend this very digitized world, or country at least, you need to think more broadly. Uh, so basically, after much deliberation, they decided to form to establish a new entity that is both civilian and uh, operational that will be responsible for the entire uh, civilian uh, sector and th that's where I worked uh, since it's established basically. Uh, the authority is responsible both for the guidance, it could be the critical infrastructure companies, it also could be the uh, important sectors such as the health sector or the uh, finance sector working with the relevant regulators in order to raise their resilience levels. But also it could be uh, small and medium enterprises on the, working on uh, generic tools and methodologies to help them against attacks. Um, and of course, up to uh, the man and the woman in the street, how to um, protect their own uh, computer in terms of very generic guidelines uh, on that. Uh, the authority also uh, did uh, operational activities. So we, we had uh, IR, incident response teams, that uh, managed about 100 uh, incidents per month. Uh, both, it could be online, it could be uh, via a phone, it could be also on premise. We had teams that could uh, arrive at our city and deal with, uh, with different uh, incidents. Uh, we also worked on capacity building to, uh, to raise uh, professional levels in our own personnel and uh, so forth. Now, in the UK and the US, we hear a lot about how uh, cyber government bodies are stretched and can't necessarily add the value that companies would like them to. It sounds like that's a little bit different in Israel. Would, would you say so? Yeah, so it, it's, it's a hard challenge. You need to always think about what, what, is, what is added value of those gov governmental entities because you don't want to replace uh, private uh, companies from a whole variety of reasons. Uh, but there are, uh, there are a lot of reasons why those uh, government entities should exist, basically. Uh, you can think about uh, how they could change the incentive, uh, the incentive fr framework uh, in order to um, uh, make companies uh, more uh, reactive to cybersecurity. But it could also be uh, areas that are specifically public uh, sector when, where no other company has a real incentive to, um, to, uh, to be active in, for example, uh, defending the elections and so forth. Now that's obviously very topical. And how has Israel gone about defending elections? Yeah, so it, 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 was, it was quite in the news in the last few years. So what, what is... Of course, I can't think of something more important than defending our own, our own democracy in all the, all the democratic world. But actually, what is defending democracy? It's, it's actually two different vectors. The first, I would say the more technological, is defending the democratic infrastructure itself uh, from interfering. The uh, voter uh, databases, voting uh, systems, it could be uh, also the, the logistics system surrounding the, the, the democratic uh, the elections process. Um, so here you're working about really like technology security controls regarding systems. 
Uh, but I have to say that it would be really, really hard even for state level actors to intervene in the uh, results themselves. Mm -hmm. um, partly because the ballots are still paper. So you could try to mess uh, around, but not in the, on the real results. Uh, this is the first vector. The second vector, which is uh, more talked of, is regarding influence. How do you influence via cyber uh, on the democratic uh, process? Uh, so actually, it's the same thing that, that happened 100 years ago, but in different uh, terms. So back then, you uh, distribute pamphlets through doves or uh, planes uh, in order to influence the the other countries or uh, things like that. Here you do it via uh, cyber. Uh, it could be by, uh, by uh, botnets, it could be by hacking into different uh, candidates and pulling information out of it. And you saw a lot of, a lot of examples in the last few years. Uh, in, the, in 2016 in, in the US, there has been also attempts in France in 2017 uh, I also heard reports regarding uh, breaching to the, the Bundestag, the, the German uh, parliament, and you see more and more uh, uh, attempts like, uh, like this. And here, the, the government uh, entities could work in a variety of, uh, of areas. Uh, it could be by uh, briefing uh, MPs personnel regarding their own cybersecurity uh, safety. Uh, wh why shouldn't you press on a link that someone just sent you? Uh, and it could also be uh, briefing the personnel of the, um, of, the, of the elections committee regarding what exactly to do and when. And it could be also uh, pure technological defenses of the, of the process uh, itself. I know that we also, uh, in Israel, we have an election in a few, in a few months um, and there, are, there have been reports regarding uh, work in progress in this matter. It all comes back to how governments and the media can build trust. Is the Israeli government doing anything around that to try and help build trust in that process? Yeah, so there, there, are, uh, there are attempts in, the, in this matter. I know that from the last few days, the, our uh, own um, elections committee, which I think is quite parallel to what, uh, what is here in terms of framework, has uh, reached out all, to all of the parties to, uh, to agree on a, on a, I don't know, a, a, like a mutual agreement uh, form that uh, would uh, say basically that uh, they, no party will try to um, meddle with the elections in terms of, uh, I don't know, full disclosure of, of any publication. So when you, when you go online or go on, on the street, you couldn't see any, uh, I don't know, um, uh, propaganda, any, uh, any uh, advertisement regarding something without knowing who was the man behind it. Uh, it could also be things that will, will work globally in terms of I don't know, government entities working with digital uh, platforms regarding for disclosure, that you couldn't see any, uh, any uh, say regarding uh, a specific topic from something that is formal without having the V identifying that it is indeed this man that he claims he is. Brilliant. Now you've also then taken that uh, work with national security and put that into healthcare and there's some really great parallels between the infrastructure within healthcare. Is there anything you can share with us about what you did there? Yeah, so generally speaking, I can't think about, I cannot think about any information more sensitive than my health information and my health records, and I can't think about something more important, more important to an individual uh, than in his own health. So it's two things that are important. Uh, and also, uh, I could say that uh, in relative to other sectors, they could, there is still progress to be made, because if you compare it, I don't know, to the finance sector, the finance sector, because also of all its funds that is, it's making from its own money, uh, then it, it, do, it does have money to invest in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. also because it's highly, uh, in, it's highly dependent on these digital assets. But healthcare is different because in the healthcare, you always have this tension, like managerial tension between the clinical needs and uh, uh, security needs. Because every dollar or pound you spend on, an, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, 
a firewall is a dollar you don't spend on an, an, an MRI mm -hmm. or even another uh, personnel. So it's, it's, uh, it's a hard task to, to manage. Uh, you also have a lot of different devices that you don't really have in other uh, sectors. You can have in one hospital, you have medical devices, you have data uh, systems of uh, health records. You have also the electricity that you're also connected to, or could be connected to the internet. And you have also uh, the business, um, the business uh, systems. So you need to manage each of them. Many times they're connected and interconnected with, with them. Um, and you saw in the last few years a lot of, uh, of incidents in uh, healthcare. It, you, can't talk, you cannot talk about, uh, about healthcare without mentioning WannaCry, that although it wasn't focused against specifically health, the result showed us the reality of what could happen when combining uh, cybersecurity and health in a bad way. Um, but I know that, again, government and Ministry of Health around the world are working on um, on ways to uh, to raise the resilience levels. Um, I can tell of, uh, of Israel where the Ministry of Health is working uh, hard on uh, on that. Um, I worked at uh, the leading cybersecurity consultancy in Israel, BDO, uh, working exactly on that. Uh, working on it could be, for example. Uh, practical guides for IT personnel in hospitals regarding uh, the whole risk assessment process uh, of their uh, systems, starting from mapping and identifying their uh, critical assets, uh, identifying their uh, exposure levels, their risk levels, and, all, and at the end of the day, establish a work plan with specific controls regarding how exactly to defend their MRI or the, uh, their uh, um, health record systems um, I, I also know that here in, uh, in the UK, NHS is, work, is, work, is working hard with uh, IBM, IBM Security, regarding uh, also their own uh, cybersecurity. And also you can see in, in the US where, um, where the FDA uh, a few months ago published uh, a new framework, security for uh, medical devices. Uh, so that's something that uh, we need to think of uh, in the years ahead. But still, but still, when you open the news, you see a lot of mainly data breaches um, in, in the healthcare uh, uh, context. In the last year, you saw in the Singaporean Ministry of Health with million and a half uh, records lost, and also in uh, Norway with, I think, three million records lost. So it's an ongoing uh, struggle. And as we look forward to the next year in cybersecurity, what do you think we're going to see? Yeah. So it's always a hard, uh, a hard uh, question. I would say generally that as companies uh, use more and more uh, technology, not only city companies, but also uh, every other uh, companies, uh, then so raises the need to, to, defend, to defend it. And it's uh, true also regarding new technologies uh, where you need specific uh, defense uh, me uh, mechanisms in order to, to defend it. Uh, I could talk about uh, two, for example. The first is blockchain. We talked about blockchain as a, a secure way to uh, defend uh, distributed ledgers uh, with multiple uh, actors, but actually there are uh, huge security issues regarding blockchain. And I, and I can see a lot of security companies establishing, many of them in Israel, by the way, uh, regarding how to defend exactly uh, uh, blockchain uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. Um, so more work for us, so in a way, yeah. uh, that's one. The second is AI. Uh, there are different aspects of AI. I want to talk about two. The first, it's what's called adversarial uh, AI or machine learning. That is in the sense that although the, the machine is, is smart, it's not smart enough when you identify what exactly is its uh, way of operation, you can uh, input bad information into it and make it uh, work bad. Think about um, a company that, uh, such as Mobileye that uh, knows how to identify uh, different uh, um, like things on the road, but if you can understand how does it uh, how can it see? You can actually make her, I don't know, uh, interpret a uh, stop sign as, as, a, as a free, as a, you know, 
just drive sign. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one. The other uh, is um, what's called AI powered or, or AI enabled or AI assisted attacks. So uh, this is uh, still, I don't know about the, the next year, but it's, it's going to be in the, at least in the, next, in the next five or 10 years. Think about uh, one, examples, one example of, I don't know, WannaCry. So WannaCry wants uh, to manage to get into the NHS network. It used one specific exploit, Eternal Blue, to, uh, to, the, it, to the lateral movement to jump between one, uh, one computer to the next. But think about the future when once inside your network, it won't use only one uh, met method that it decided uh, beforehand, but once inside, the, the, the software can understand what's, who are you, what can you do, and, and from that, it can use other tools in order to infiltrate more uh, efficiency, more efficient. And that, that's going to be a huge, huge uh, challenge to uh, to companies and to subsecurity companies because now you use AI in terms of, of of defense, but not in terms of how do you, how do you uh, protect yourself against AI attacks. So that's going to be interesting. But I have to say that although using all these buzzwords regarding AI and with blockchain uh, now, and even in the next year or two, 80 or 90% of all attacks are not that, or they are dodgy emails, they are websites not using HTTPS protocol, they are uh, companies having uh, weak passwords. So that, you don't need big technology for that. You need basically good incentives to make people uh, understand better their, uh, their, own, uh, their own needs and um, I know that also in, in this regard, government entities are working on broader solutions that could help um, a lot of companies. Well, there's a lot in there and we could probably talk for a little bit longer, but thank you very much for being with me this morning and thank giving some much. insight. Thank, thank you. you very much.